Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And today I wanted to show you a little trick that I use when warping a short warp on my new to me um, Ashford 8 shaft table loom. So the warp that I'm gonna be putting on is just two yards. It's for some more of the little cocktail napkins that I did before. And I liked them so much I decided to do them in a different color way. So uh, using my warping board for two yards is really not very efficient. So I'm going to use a little trick that I learned when I uh, weave on a rigid heddle loom and do a direct peg warping. So I thought that I would show you how I do that. So you can see I've got my, warp, my loom set up here. And we're going to have the front of the loom uh, facing on the side, on the left. And the back of the loom is on the right here. And then I've got my uh, warp rolls of yarn set up down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to warp directly from these rolls of yarn. Um, we're going to tie on to the back uh, warp rod and we're going to not go through any heddles but we have our 12 dent reed set up here and then over here I have a peg attached to a um, shelf that I have uh, that can pull out and it's it's stable so this peg needs to be stable and then your loom needs to be stable because um, you're going to be winding the warp from the back uh, warp rod through the front through the reed around the peg and back. So how, you say, do you get this roll of yarn through a 12 dent reed? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you. So let's get started. All right, the first thing I want to make sure is I want to measure the distance from my peg to my back warp bar and I want to make sure that that is uh, two yards so we'll just take our tape measure and looks like I am not quite there so I'm going to pull my table back until I get 72 inches. Alright, so a little less. There. Alright. So this method really is only efficient if you are warping um, a short warp because otherwise if you were doing a five yard warp, you would have to put that peg five yards away from your apron rod or your uh, warp rod. And that's not really practical. But because this is just two yards and we're going to um, be doing it uh, 79 um, threads, we can do this just fine. So my first thread is uh, the white thread and I'm going to tie that around my warp bar and I'm going to tie it with a knot that will not a knot that will not um, tighten up on me and but I want it big enough that I can uh, I can slip my 
scissors through there and um, cut it when I'm done. So um, I'm going to take the first loop. I'm going to reach through here and kind of pull it up to the reed. And then where my reed is supposed to have the first thread go through it is right about there. I'm going to put my slaying hook through there and I'm going to grab that loop. And then I'm going to bring that loop up to the working peg. And I'm not going to pull terribly hard on that, on this thread. I don't want a lot of tension on it, um, but enough to, as if you're warping um, your, on a warping board. So now I come back to the warp bar and my thread continues down to my roll down there. And I'm going to go over the warp bar and come under it and pull that through to the reed again. So now I've got another loop. But because I'm warping two threads through each um, dent in my 12 dent reed, I want to double check and see if my pattern is 12 ends per inch or 24, because I can't remember. One dent um, one end per dent. Okay. So if it's one end per dent and I'm putting two ends in each dent, I need to thread this through every other dent. Okay, so we take My roll is not unrolling properly. Oh, it's all tangled up with the other colors. All right, that didn't work very well. Okay, there. All right. So I come back down here. Now I always want to go around the warping peg in the same direction. So I am going to go uh, from left, which is secured, to right, which is unsecured. And just like when I do it on the working board, I don't overlap my threads, I keep them stacked. So then I come back here, and I'm going to do this um, nine times so that I have 18 threads. So now I've got my 18 threads. Now the next part of the pattern says to 
thread um, one dark blue and one white four times. So now because I am warping two threads through each dent, I need to figure out how to get um, one blue and one white. But because I am um, threading this, or I'm warping it, uh, this is not the final threading. So what I can do is I can thread every other dent with two dark blue and two white blue. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to bring up my dark blue here and I will tie this on like I did with the white with just a square knot. Okay. Now, I finished with uh, the white. Now I need to do uh, the blue. So I'm going to take the blue and I'll just leave the white kind of hanging there. I'm going to thread the blue in the opposite dent or in the next dent. I'm skipping every other dent and I'm still going to do that. So we're going to do the blue. And now I'm going to let the blue uh, sit here. And I think I'm going to kind of tuck it under um, something so that it doesn't get caught up. And I'm going to take the white and I'm going to pull it through. to do that with the blue again.
All right, so I'm just confirming uh, how many blue threads and white threads I'm going to be using this morning. Because of how they're distributed, um, there are three more white threads than blue threads uh, in this section. So I think for this next round, I am going to do um, an extra white. This one. And instead of doing blue, I will do white. Now I'm going to count out my threads and make sure that I am still good. square knot. Um, if it uh, isn't right at the back of the rod, that's fine. 14 and 15. Okay. So because there is an odd number of threads here, This needs to be tied off down here. So I'm going to wrap that around um, a couple times. So because we were doing, um, because we're switching to just the light blue now, um, I could have tied it off to this white and tied a um, loop with the dark blue um, to be the end there. But because this will eventually, uh, this loop will get cut and threaded through our heddles, um, I'm just going to wrap it around there a few times and cut it off and then pull it through. So we're done with the dark blue, we're done with the light blue, or with the white, and now we will just continue on with the light blue. And we'll do 34 uh, threads of the light blue. And again, every other dent knot here and I don't want a knot there. So what I'm going to do, I don't want a knot in the middle of my work, so I will cut that little guy off and wrap that around there like we did the white one. Okay. 
actually. Fly. We're going to take and we're going to tie it so that the knot is down here at this end, all the way at the end. So the nice part about doing it this way is that um, you don't have to use a rattle, uh, you don't have to use your warping board. And now we can wind the warp on. So now that we have our uh, warp measured out, uh, we need to create a cross. Now this warping method, when used with a rigid heddle loom, you thread the loops through um, the slots in the rigid heddle and you don't use the um, the holes and so then when you uh, wind the warp onto the um, onto the beam back the back beam and you are then left with the, the front part of your warp through ev every um, slot and that acts as a cross because then you take one of the threads out of the slot and you thread it through the hole. In this instance, we don't have that because we have only gone through the reed. So what I'm going to do is I have my two leaf sticks here and I have a loop. So this is one part of my cross. And I'm going to create my cross behind my reed. <clears throat> Now, what I'm going to do with the um, second leaf stick is each thread that is uh, through the reed, uh, one thread is one half of my uh, cross. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take on each one of these, I'm going to take the top thread and cross it um, over the bottom thread. So let's see if I can get a better picture of that. All right, 
So I'm going to take this first thread, these first pair of threads here, and um, one of them is naturally the top and one is naturally the bottom. And my leaf stick back here is showing that also. So I'm going to take the uh, top one and I'm going to cross it down to the bottom towards me. And that will create a cross in back. And I'm going to put my leaf stick in there. Okay, now I'm going to do that with each successive one. And this is a little bit labor intensive, but um, in the long run, it's faster. Um, I could probably uh, skip making a cross at all. Um, it's a fairly simple warp. Um, but I thought I would demonstrate how it's done for you. And my back cross is trying to come out, so we'll just fix that. There we go. Um, you could probably do this with a pickup stick also really easily. Probably more easily than I'm having to do it here. And if I go back behind the reed here, and I realize that I'm probably blocking the camera, but um, I'm able to uh, just grab these in back and flip them there we go okay so now I have a nice little cross there um, so we'll go ahead and put our holders on All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, double check that I have the correct number of threads in each color before I wind on. Because once I wind on, I'm kind of committed um, to that number of threads. So I'll go ahead and check that and then we'll start winding on. Okay, so now I have checked all my threads, um, and it was a good thing that I did check because I was missing about half of the light blue ones. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking, but um, that's why you double check. So now I am going to use uh, this uh, basically heavy uh, paper as my work separator, and I will just put this back here. I'm going to get it started and where it's going to be so that it can just roll on easily. And I'm going to take uh, this loop off of the warping peg. And when I do that, it's we're going to wind it just like we would normally wind a warp. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control it here. I'm going to pull it up off the peg and then I am going to chain it uh, a little bit so that it stays under control and will not get tangled. So that's probably, probably good right there. Um, then the way that I like to uh, wind my warps um, because I work by myself, um, I use a weight. So I uh, I put I put a looped cord um, around the warp here and that will the more weight that pulls on it the tighter it will get and i'm just going to actually take this all the way down here and then i'm going to take one of my vitamin water bottles and i'm going to create a I believe it's called a snitch knot. So basically if you take the loop like this and you put your hand in it and then you grab the two legs and pull it through, it creates another loop that is self-cinching. I put that over the bottle. And so when the weight is on it, everything cinches up and it will not, um, it won't come off. So now we can come back to the back here and I'm going to take the latch off and I will start winding my warp on. And as you can see, this is such a short warp that I've already need to put this lower. So go ahead and take that chain out. Make everything nice and taut. And then we can put that down there on the ground. Alright, that's better. do now that we've got the um, we were keeping these uh, the warping peg and the loom at a set distance which was two yards and now that I have it all measured out I can move this to the other end of the table and let my warp uh, hang off the end there
right down and then I can take the weight off. So at this point, um, space up front. There. So now what I'm going to do is just the same uh, process as if I was warping um, back to front and I will um, put my leaf sticks behind my heddles here and then I can um, cut the loop here in front. these through the reed. That's just a little knot. Okay. There. So now I can um, thread the haddles, thread the reed, and start weaving. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I would appreciate you giving a thumbs up and uh, commenting to let me know what other tips and tricks that you would like to see in my future videos. Thanks, and happy weaving.